video. I have been wanting to film this for such a long time. I've been putting it off because I was like, I don't have time, but you know what? But I just like haven't found like books that I'm like obsessed with and like been loving. And since all of us are the same person here, I was like, you know what? Let me milk my resources. And so a long time ago, I actually need to find a story on my Instagram. It was from like such a long time ago. Oh, I found it. Oh my gosh, my hair was so long back then. Oh my God. This was before I chopped three inches off my hair in my bathroom and cut layers impulsively. But I asked for you guys to tell me your six star books i trust your guys's book recommendations we were born to be stuff Urban okay, someone said the Poppy War trilogy. Actually, this is quite perfect timing because I'm actually going to go see RF Kwan because she's coming to Toronto for TIFF. I think that she's coming for Babel, which I already read, but I still really want to read the Poppy War. I read like half of it and I really, really liked it. And then I posted it on my Instagram story that I was reading it. And then I got so many DMs of people being like, oh my gosh, like you're not prepared. Like good luck for like the last half of the book. Like it's so traumatizing. Like, like sis, like good luck. And it scared me. And so I stopped reading it because I'm like, kind of squeamish. I know that I'm gonna like it. I'm just like scared because it's about war and like trauma. Is it graphic? Like I don't... Anyway, I'm still gonna read it so that I can go see R of Kwong at the end of this week. I think I have the Poppy War on my Kindle. I think I didn't see it or flashing light. At least I had the decency to... Backpack reveal. I actually haven't read on my Kindle in a really long time. Poppy War. I do have it. I low-key need to find my place. I might have to read like a recap of like the first half or something. I also think I'm gonna go through these and screenshot a couple that I'm interested in and I will report back. But I have to go to school. I actually have a test today and I have a test tomorrow. I literally have to head out the door right now, but I realized that I didn't even give it an update. Uh, I'm 50% of the way through The Poppy War because I just started at part two and I read like a recap of part one because I'm pretty sure that's where I ended. It's still a good book, as good as I remember it to be. I think I'm getting to the scary part because the war has started and it's already extremely graphic and... I'm worried, darling, for Rin, our girl Rin. She's like the underdog. So basically, I don't know if I explain what this book is about. It's like inspired by like historical Asia, the Sino-Japanese war, I'm pretty sure. Um, and we follow a girl named Rin and she's basically from the poorest of poorville. Unless she like gets into this really prestigious like war academy, she has to get married to this much older man, a disgusting older man. And so she studies so hard, like it's actually insane. And she actually ends up getting like the highest mark ever and gets accepted into like this elite war academy with like her tuition paid for and stuff. But of course, when she goes, she's slapped in the face by terrible, terrible prejudice against the fact that she's like a farm girl. She's dark skinned and so people hate that. She's poor, people hate that. So the first half is just her in that war academy, like making allies, making enemies, which you guys know I love that kind of setting. I was trying to guess like who the love interest was gonna be. I know that's not like the point of the story, but like I still wanna know. I thought that it was gonna be a specific person. And then I started reading part two and they died. <laughs> I'm worried, darling. Um, and then I thought it was gonna be like her teacher. Okay, I don't know. I need to stop guessing. I'm gonna get canceled. Now I think that it's gonna be someone else. I just keep <laughs> guessing, even though there's like so much bigger fish to fry. Okay, everyone, I'm 73% of the way through the poppy war now. <coughs> also, I'm becoming sick, so I'm not gonna go to school tomorrow. But all I will say so far, I literally hate every single man in this book. Team Rin or nothing at all. This is one book of men behaving badly. Also, I think about chapter like 18 or something, one of my friends from my class who read this book and told me to read it, she said that like chapter 20 is like really, really traumatic. Like that traumatic chapter from the Poppy War, chapter 20. This is chapter 20. I literally feel sick. I actually feel physically sick. Look up the trigger warnings to this book if you're gonna read it. Oh my God, I don't wanna read it. Oh, I don't wanna read it. Oh my God. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god, I can't. I can't. I'm gonna skip the next couple pages. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, hi everyone. I finally finished The Poppy War last night. 
I actually think I would rate it like a four stars maybe like really see why people love it so much I feel like maybe I would feel differently if I read it all in one go See this is what I've noticed I think about R.F. Kuang's books is that I think like she sections off her books so well Like even with Babel there's like a part one and part two and the parts like seem like different books almost like they're like different stories Like part one is literally just like a prologue prequel and then all the action happens in part two like everything Which I love so much because part one is like arguably more important because it sets up all of like the nuances of like the relationship between the characters and like their backstory their motivations and then that is what makes part two so spicy because you know all these characters and why they're acting like this and it just makes it so good like i felt that with the poppy war too and i understand why like people are really torn about rin like rin's character development and like what happens at the end of that book. like i rescind what i said about being team rin or nothing i don't know it's so interesting it's like you're seeing like the corruption of someone like you don't know whether to root for her and you don't know like you just don't know who to root for actually i know who to root for if you know you know I understand why this book is like so traumatic I think it's like just that one chapter like that one section um where it's oh my gosh like th the part that I skipped that part is like so traumatic to the point where I was like is this being just like gratuitous but I'm like no because this actually did happen like in real life real life historical events that this book was inspired by like this did happen it's accurate which is makes it 10 times worse it was really well done I think and like just the parallels like such a big brain, Rebecca! So big brain. Like, I want to be her when I grow up. The amount of work that must have gone into, like, creating the story and, like, all of her books, I feel that way. I was looking through more of, like, more of the six-star books that you guys submitted. As I expected, a lot of Once Upon a Broken Heart, The Ballad of Never After series by Stephanie Garber, which I knew that I couldn't avoid this forever because people have been telling me to read it. Everyone just loves that book series, like, and I read the first book right when it came out, actually, before it even got all the hype. And I thought it was, like, so, so, like, I thought it was like three stars but, like everyone and their mother is loving like the second book and the romance like see that like I'm a romance girl right like everyone loves like the romance in it and I'm like maybe it's worth it then like to me that'll be worth it I think that there's potential there so that's why I think I'm gonna start reading that the ballad of never after I already read the first book once upon a broken heart this is like a spinoff from like the Carl series and you follow a girl named Evangeline and she basically makes a deal with one of the fates named Jax he's like the prince of hearts so that she can like be with like the guy that she likes I remember the writing and the world like I think this about the Carl series too like the writing in the world is very like it's very whimsical Alice in Wonderland like fairy tale type vibes like vibes is nice like the vibes and aesthetic it's giving but to me it was just like the characters like, i end up never just like caring enough about the characters and there was never like a couple i was like really really rooting for but if there's a couple that i'm rooting for like it will be like the best book ever i'm gonna look at my hair like i'm locked in i see the potential with Jax and evangeline i can almost taste it i can almost see it i think what i have to do is like go on pinterest find pictures of evangeline and Jax so that i can like really picture it in my head this better be like the best book ever like the way that everyone raves about it maybe if i like this i'll read the third book and i'll be on the hype train with everyone else because i have fomo i want to be on the hype train i'm nine percent of the way through this book but it's time for me to do my due diligence go back to pinterest here i am Jax and evangeline wow people really pop off what is this scene that everyone is drawing bro what everyone is drawing that same thing like him carrying her what book is that from and what chapter is it <laughs> I think that's like an excerpt from the book that I'm reading right now. There's another one. Oh my gosh, I keep spoiling myself. I'm getting the vibes, I think. Like... Okay, I think I got it. I think I've got it. Okay, 26% of the way through and can in fact confirm that the chemistry is chemistry -ing. I feel like I'm a feminist until it's like the he will like go to like all ends of the earth and battle anything in order to save her and like protect her like... Oh my gosh, it's... I understand. Like, the guess? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm at 59% of the way through Ballad of- I keep wanting to say Ballad of Songbirds and Stakes because the movie came out and that's like all I can think about. Ballad of Never After. Obviously, we're all here for Jax. The thing about Jax, I realized it's something I call the Will Herondale effect. Basically, having like a nonchalant, not caring persona, like pretend he doesn't care about anything, like everything is just not a big deal. But then you see like glimpses of him actually like showing that he cares a lot when it counts, like in situations where like she's in danger showing his cards every once in a blue moon i'm gonna try to see if i can finish this book i would love to just finish it okay i'm 77 through and this is 
So, Will and Tessa coded. You guys know, I don't even know what chapter this is, but like, it's really giving the holy water scene from Clockwork Angel. I'm eating it up so bad. It's like classic. Okay, whatever trope this is, like, I've just discovered my new favorite trope ever. When he is like, normally acts like he doesn't care, nonchalance, all that stuff. When they're injured or like, because of something, like, they're kind of delirious and they like have lowered inhibition. And like, she's like, they're tending to his wounds or like, whatever it is, like, taking care of him. And then his like, you guys know what I'm talking about. I know you know. Like his true, like, it comes out. Like, just one night in the morning, you can forget it. You can go back to pretending you don't like me and I can pretend that I don't care. But for tonight, let me pretend you're mine. If it's easier, you can pretend too. You can pretend that I'm still Jax of the Hollow and that you want to be mine. Are you joking? Anyway, we're in the bathroom again because I take this so seriously. Also, I needed to take five to 10 business days in order to recover from the ballad of Never After because I can... Okay, why did no one tell me to read this book earlier? Mm -hmm. As if people have not been absolutely screaming at my face and stuffing down my throat the fact that I need to read this book. If I knew the trope that was gonna be at the end of this book, then I would have picked it up so fast, but I understand why no one said anything because technically it's like a big spoiler, I guess, but just know that if you know me, the trope at the end of this book is genuinely one of my favorite tropes of all time in books. Like, it's like such a god- it's like above a god tier trope. It's like my favorite trope ever, like, and that's like kind of toxic of me and a lot of people dislike it, but for some reason I just like am toxic. I think that's like my red flag. It's like the most painful trope you'll ever see in your life ever probably and I just like eat it up like I have to read the third book in fact I already got it on my kindle and I'm going to read it I decided a curse for true love there it is it's been a really long time since I've like read a book and then immediately wanted the sequel like a need not a want it's been a minute since I felt that way about a book I'm telling you it's the Will Herondale Riz effect like the angst like no one writes like angst in like these like books like this. Okay, hello everyone. Anyway, I'm here to update you that I'm 60% of the way through A Curse for True Love. Also, I made this is two pomegranates. Fun fact about me, pomegranates and persimmons are like my favorite fruit ever and they're like fall fruits and so I'm like <laughs> so happy. I'm gonna sit here and read with my pomegranate. Oh my god. This is gonna be the best day ever. Good news everyone. I finished A Curse for True Love. That was wild. I finished series in this video. Wasn't planning on doing that. Of course, I gave it a five stars. I should have just listened to you guys from the very start. I was foolish and it will never happen again. They were just so sweet. Like Jackson Evangeline. I was eating it up. Uh, everything. There's like so many tropes that I love specifically. They're so specific. They're so pacific. So many of them. They were just like all in this book. I'm like, wow. Stephanie and I are like this. Anyway, I'm debating on whether or not I should read another book because one that I saw a lot of people say in their six star reads was Unbecoming of Mara Dyer published a long time ago like 2011 I was 10 years old when this book was published and I remember like it being like kind of an it book series but I remember it being like a little bit edgy like I think it's like a little bit darker but a lot of people will put it, it as their six star read Mara Dyer believes life can't get any stranger than waking up in a hospital with no memory of how she got there but it can she believes there must be more to the accident she can't remember that killed her friends and left her strangely unharmed she doesn't believe that after everything she's been through she can fall in love she's wrong and that sounds juicy we'll say that it's like really addicting the plot is unique like this is like one of those rare cases where it's like a pretty well-known like ya book series from a long time ago and i have had no spoilers about it like i genuinely don't know anything about what this book is about i think i know the care like the name of like the guy in it i think his name is noah i genuinely don't know anything about it and at the ripe age of 22 i might just give it a read maybe i will do that i'll just read one more book in this video because i have nothing else to do I'm trying to motivate myself to read and finish this book so that i can go watch the ballad of songbirds and snakes i'm 29 percent of the way through this book i'm worried darling because the second i started reading this book i was like oh it's giving like we were liars because our main character mara dyer like she just wakes up in the hospital um she's told that like her friends like died and no one knows what happened except for her except she doesn't remember like she lost her memory i don't know sketchy stuff is happening and we're trying to figure out like what happened but it's like <laughs> we were liars like war flashbacks for real also we met the guy noah shaw and like i just like i don't like him he is like just ugh. like if i met this man in real life i would be like walking red flag walk the other direction like it's not even like the good kind of red flag he's just like so suspicious to me but like all men are but like he i don't know i hate like cocky men all those tiktoks that are like when like the really confident guy's talking you up but then like you see his friend behind him like mean mugging everyone like the quiet socially awkward one instead it's like oh i kind of like your friend he's the overly cocky like confident guy like talking people up and i'm like i don't 
I don't like you. Anyway, I'm still gonna give another shot, but if I don't like it, I'm not gonna make myself read it. I'm like around halfway through the book now, and I just want to know what happens. Past timeline with her friends, like I don't care about anything that's happening in the present. This man, like Noah, better be like the plot twist that's like related to how her friends like died and stuff like at the beginning because you're spending way too much time with this man. Like you're spending so much time with a man who quite literally told her you're not like other girls at the beginning of this book. This book is very, very dated, I will say. It shows blatant slut shaming. I'm skim reading so bad because I don't care at all about any of these characters, like on a personal level. I just want to know what the plot twist is, like what the explanation is. Like, I was even tempted to just DNF this and then just Google what the plot twist was. People are gonna get mad at me. Yeah, what if I did that and then I just put an Oscar worthy performance for this vlog? <laughs> oh, I don't want to have to read the rest of it. Like, this walked so we were liars could run. There's no way I just read that right. There's no way that everyone is thirsting over a man and a relationship like this where she literally tells Noah there is something seriously wrong with me there's nothing anyone can do to fix it and then this man says let me try I'm gonna google I think what the ending oh, also I busted my knee oh my god God, that is not what I was expecting this book to be about. Well, <laughs> I'm already over it. Let's go over there and we'll conclude. Plot twist, we're ending this video in my bathroom again because I just heard my sister come out to the kitchen. I would say that this was a roaring success for the most part. I had you in the first half, I think. Thank you for sharing your six star reads with me. If you guys want to see another rendition of this video because you guys gave me so many good book recommendations. Like a lot of you guys were saying like a lot of the same book that I didn't get a chance to read this week. So if you want to see me read more, then let me know. And follow me on Instagram at Sydney Kim Reads so that you guys can like I take so many suggestions from you guys but that's gonna be all for this video thanks so much for watching I'm gonna go watch the Ballad of Songbirds and Stakes anyway I'll see you all in the next one goodbye good fortune Toby